Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. This is Dilmer again. And what I'm gonna be doing today is I'm gonna be showing you how meshing works with the iPhone 12 Pro. We're gonna be going through a demo that I created to demonstrate that. And I'm also going to be showing you how the code works in the next few minutes. So make sure that you stick around by the end of the video because you're gonna be going through and implementing what I'm about to show you. So first things first, I'm going to go ahead and open up the demo that is going to demonstrate those features. So as you guys can see, I'm basically just, you know, I'm moving my phone around and at some point it's going to start meshing in the room and by meshing it's basically creating a mesh of the objects that I'm seeing through the phone. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to increment the size here. The size allows me to control the size of the vegetation. If you look at the vegetation that I just created, that vegetation is there are prefabs that I set up in Unity. So I'm going to be showing you that as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to place a couple in here. I can also look and see, you know, areas where it kind of looks boring. So I can probably, you know, I have I have some real vegetation in here. What if we put one next to it? Let's see, we have some flowers. You guys can see how accurate that is. And what about maybe we just put one right in here and one right there. There we go. And we can also add some to the ceiling. Maybe the ceiling just looks too boring. It kind of looks like a, like a snake, but you kind of get the idea. The the other cool thing that I can do, let me just add a couple more in here, is I can also turn the mesh visibility on and off. So if I wanted to turn it off, you guys can see that that looks now a lot better. And if we go close to it, you can see that that is actually attached to my computer. The ones on the back are also attached to the walls and they're relative to the position that I selected with my phone, which is, which is actually really, really impressive. So I'm really excited about it. So let's jump into Unity and start working on it. All right guys, so let me show you how this project is set up. So I have an AR machine demos. This is the Unity project that I created. I'm not gonna be walking you through every little thing because I think there's a lot of things in here that are not specific to this video. So just know that this is gonna be available in GitHub. The first thing that I wanna show you is in addition to the placeholders for AR foundations such as AR session, AR session origin, the camera. And then I also have some UI here that is going to allow us to turn the, the visibility on and off also change the size of the instances that we're going to be creating by touching on the meshing. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you what the AR Mesh Manager is for. So this is gonna be the, the component that you're gonna need in order for you to, to create a mesh of the environment, right? So the AR Mesh Manager is what AR Foundation actually provides to you as a way to generate meshes. So this component is gonna be one that you can just add to an object make sure that that object is inside the AR session origin. Just like I did in here, just basically just created an object and then I added the AR mesh manager. And then I also have a prefab in here. So if you wanted to do this from scratch, all you need to do is just search for AR mesh manager. And then you're gonna see that it's going to be listed in there. Once you do that, this is not going to be associated. This is gonna be the prefab that you create. This is custom for me. So if we go into the, the prefabs here, the mesh component, you're gonna see that it's going to be a little bit different than you've seen before because it does have a mesh filter, but it does have a mesh. And the reason for that is because the mesh is going to be generated by the lighter. So that's why this is basically set to none. The mesh render is what's going to allow us to actually render a mesh. And if you don't do, if you don't add a render, it's not gonna, it's actually not gonna display. So make sure that you add that to your prefab. You're gonna have a mesh filter. You're gonna have a mesh render and then it's going to have a material and you saw from the beginning of the video that the material looked like this. So I have a default mesh material that basically, you know, it's set to black and it has a little bit of a, of a transparency into it. You guys can see here the albedo and then I have 161 on the, on the alpha channel and it's using a standard material. So that's what the mesh component is gonna, is gonna have. And if you go back to the AR mesh manager, that just, all I did was just associate that component with the mesh prefab and then when this starts, as long as you have an iPad Pro or an iPhone you know, 12 Pro, this is going to work or any other you know, component, any other device that supports meshing such as you know, Magic Leap and also the HoloLens. So in my case, I'm using you know, iOS type devices. Density, I set it to, you know, to one. You can lower this if you want the tessellation not to be you know, too detailed. So I set it to one, I mean, it, it performs fine in the way that, that I had it. I think by default it was like 0.5 and you can just use that value. For now, I just already tested it with one, I think that's okay. You can also use, you know, enable normals if you wanna get, you know, the normals for each vertex. 
And then you can also use the same with, you know, the tangents, the texture coordinates. If you wanted to get colors, you can also do that. And I haven't used this, you know, to be honest, that much. I only use the, you know, default, the default, which is the normals. And then the component that is mainly for today is going to be this place on mesh. It might look like I did a lot of it ahead of time, but all I actually did is just add references. So just know that these references are going to be used in the script that we have here, but we're going to be implementing these two methods that I want to basically go over with you so that you guys know how to do a raycast against the generated meshes, which is going to be all in the update method. And you can also see how we can toggle the meshes on and off and also how we can change the materials. So this is going to be basically our homework for today. And then everything else is here is just basically just references. So if we look at some of the references, just to kind of give you an overview, we're going to need a reference to the mesh manager. The reason for that is because we need to get the meshes. The, the reason why we need to get the meshes is because, is because we need to determine, you know, what, what the mesh render is assigned to so that we can turn off the visibility on and off. I also need the AR camera because we're going to be using a raycast by getting, you know, by getting a reference to the AR camera. And I also need the material that we're going to be using for when the mesh is hidden and also when the mesh is visible. So if we look at that material, it's going to be here on the material. This one is basically just a transparent object. It doesn't really have anything. I just set it to transparent. And in that way, you can't really see it. It's just using the particle standard unit. And if you add a 3D object and you assign that, you're going to see that it's completely invisible. So if I go here to 3D and we go into a cube and then assign it, you're going to see that that's what it does. So that's all I did to basically turn off the visibility. The meshing is still going to occur. All I'm doing is just basically hiding it so that we can actually see the, you know, the objects that we place on the mesh and it's going to look, it's going to look better. And visibility material is going to be just the default one that I just show you. It's going to be that black with a little bit of transparency. So if we go back here and then I just have different prefabs, I will have one for the grass, you know, one, two, three, and then you guys can see that if you, if you want to access this in GitHub, it's going to be available in Patreon. And then, you know, later on, I'll put it in GitHub as a, as public to everyone. And then I also have a slider here, which basically allows me to change the size of the prefab and also to turn on visibility on and off. So it's basically everything. And then make sure that you, you know, if you want to do a raycast, I'm using these, you know, layer mask that it's designating that I only want to do a raycast on, on the mesh. And that is a layer that I added in here. So you guys can see that it's a mesh. And if we go into the prefab here, you're going to see that this guy has that as a layer. So we're going to start by implementing the update method. So what we're going to do here is we're going to be capturing the basically the touches. So to do that, I'm going to just use a, a for loop because I want to be able to capture multiple touches. If you want to do, you know, two fingers, you, you can use two fingers if you want to use one. You can use one and then so on. So I'll just do I and then I less than, then we can just do our input. And then we need to get the, the touch count. So just do my touch count here and then I'll just do I plus plus. Then inside of the loop, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to get the touch. Well, not try, I'm going to get the touch. So I'm just going to do my var touch and then I'll just say input the get touch. And then what we're going to do is we're going to pass in I, that way we can get the current touch. So if you were holding with two fingers, you're going to get, you know, both of the, both of the touches. So that's how that works. And then I'm also going to get the touch face. I'm just going to say touch face and then just say touch and then face. It's going to make it easier to read. And then what I'm going to do is I'm only going to allow you to do this if you are on the, on the begin. So when you start touching, that's when I'm going to allow you to, and allow you to instantiate it. And also if you start moving your finger, I'm also going to allow you to instantiate some of the objects. So it's going to do touch face and then we're going to be using begin. Or if we do the touch face equal equal touch face and then we're going to do move. So when you start touching or when we're moving our fingers, that's when we're going to be, you know, executing this if statement. So the next thing that I need to do is I need to do get the ray cast position, right? So for that, we're going to have to get a ray. So to do that, I'm going to get a reference to my AR camera. That's going to be one of the references that I got above. And then I'm going to say a screen to point, a screen point to ray. And then in there, I'm just going to be passing the touch position. Let's go ahead and pass that. And then now I need to get the actual hit. So I'm just going to say, I'm going to determine if we actually, you know, hit the, hit anything with that ray. 
So I'll just do physics, and then in physics we're just going to be doing ray cast. And then in the ray cast, I'm going to be passing in the ray, which is going to have a ray from, you know, the, the actual position that we get from calling the screen point to ray, getting the reference to the ray, and then I'm going to try to see if we can get, if we get a, an actual hit. So to do that, I'm going to do out, and then I'm going to declare a new variable. It's just going to be hit. And then on the actual distance, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do flow positive infinity. Because I don't, for now, I, I don't think I need anything. I don't want to constrain the, this to be a, a specific distance. I mean, you could do like, if you want to do 10 meters, if you wanted to do five meters, you can do that as well. I'll just say positive infinity. I think that's okay. And then I need to tell it what layers we're going to be inclu including. So I'm going to just pass in a reference to my layers to include which in my case is just going to be the meshes, right? That we want to, the meshing layer that we want to include on the raycast. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, okay, you know what? As long as we have hit, if we hit, if we hit something, we're going to be creating an instance of an object. If we didn't hit anything, then there's really no reason for, for doing that. So let me go ahead and change this. It's going to be a capital H. So the first thing that I need to do is I'm just going to say, you know what, I want to create a new instance of an object. So let's go ahead and do, do that. So I'm going to do game object and I'm going to say my new object. And then in here, what I'm going to do is in the, in the very top, I have a list of prefabs that we're going to be instantiating. So what I want to do is I want to create a, basically, I don't want to just constrain it to what object. I want to do multiple objects. So I want to randomize that. So I'm going to just do null here. And then we'll just do, I'm also going to be calculating the scale because I also have a slider. Remember the slider that I have on the UI? And I'm going to say, I'm going to do vector three and then it's going to say one. And I'm going to multiply that by the prefab size. This is going to be the size of determined by the slider. So it's going to say value. So it's going to be the, the scale that we want to set this new object to. Perfect. The next thing that I want to do is I want to get the actual rotation of the object. I'm just going to say this is going to be a quaternion of that new object rotation. And then we're going to do quaternion. And in the quaternion, I'm going to get it from the rotation. And then I'm going to say, you know what, I want to get vector three up, comma, and then I'm going to just get the normals from the actual hit. So I'm going to say normal. Perfect. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to calculate the, the actual object that I'm going to, that I'm going to be instantiating. So when I say calculate, I'm just going to get a random number and then I'm just going to say range and we're going to go from zero. Zero is going to be inclusive. So if, you, if you look at the inst instructions in here, say the minimum number is going to be inclusive. Exclusive is going to be the max number, which is perfect for us because I'm going to do prefabs that length. So if we have two objects, it's going to go from zero to one. If we have three objects, it's going to go from zero to two and then so on. That way we can have these dynamic and and to be honest we could do something in here if we wanted to do you know add some constraints to make sure that we don't call these <laughs> unless we have these greater than zero then we can do that so we don't get a null exception okay so the next thing that i'll do is i'll just do new object and then we're going to use our game object instantiate and then now that we know that we have a selector and this is just going to be I, I call it selector but it's just basically an integer i was going to say prefabs and then I'm going to be passing in the selector. And now this is going to be asking for the position that we want to, you know, we actually want to instantiate that object on. So I'm just going to say hit and then the point, which is going to be the position that we're going to be putting that, that actual object. So it's going to be the hit here. So if we hit a mesh, we know that that's where we want to instantiate this object. And then we also need to put, you know, give it the rotation. So I'm going to say new object rotation. And in fact, we can just move, we can just move these down here. And we don't need to do it right there. I think that's cleaner. Perfect. So, so far so good. We just have an object and that object is at a specific location, but we haven't really designated the, the scale of that object. So I'm just going to say new object. And then we're going to be just using the transform and then local scale. And then I'm just going to be passing in the scale value that we set on the, on the very top right here, which is right here. So it's going to be that. And then I also want to associate these with a layer just to make sure that we don't we don't do a ray cast against the objects that are that are getting instantiating. So I'm just gonna say, you know, the layer of this is gonna be layer mask. And then the layer mask of this is gonna be named to layer. 
And then we just assign this to the ignore Raycast layer. Raycast. There we go. And that's basically everything. We're going to be, you know, we're going to be detecting the touches. And then on touch begin and on touch move, we're going to be doing a Raycast. If we hit the Raycast and we have prefabs, we're going to be basically creating an object that is a scale based on our options and also based on a prefab that we designated, a random prefab. So it's going to be that part. So now if we want to toggle the mesh, if we go back here and we go into Unity, let's wait until this Unity compiles. So that's going to get taken care of this and also any touches that we do here. But we haven't really implemented the mesh visibility and that's the next method that we need to implement. Let's go ahead and go into toggle mesh. So on the toggle mesh, I need to determine what the meshes are. So I'm going to say, you know what, I want to know what are all the meshes that are currently getting the got generated up to this point, right? So we're just going to do meshes and then I'm just going to add the access the mesh manager and then the mesh manager has this meshes property. And in fact, if you go into the definition of this, you can see everything that this has. And this is actually the mesh manager that we were looking through the inspector. It has a list of meshes, which is the list that we need and also other methods that we might and properties that we might use in the near future. For now, let's just keep it simple. And then I also need to get, you know, the actual mesh prefab render because if we change the material, which is what I'm going to be doing, we need to get the material of the prefab because if we create a new, a new mesh based on the prefab, we need to change the material of that as well. In addition to the material of all the meshes. So I'm going to be doing, I'm going to call this mesh prefab and then render, renderer. I can't even, I can't even say that. I won't try guys. And then I'll just say the mesh prefab and then these we're going to be getting the component, which is going to be the mesh render. I can't, I can't even say that word for some reason. But anyways, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, okay, if this is currently visible, I'm going to do this. If it's not, if this is not visible, I'm going to do this. So on the is visible, what I want to do is I want to make sure that we, we toggle it, right? We want to change it to not visible. So to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my prefab here and I'm going to be grabbing the, the actual material and I'm going to set it to the invisible material. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to do a for each and we're going to be looping through each one of these meshes. So I'm just going to say mesh in meshes. And I know that I'm going to have to do the same thing for the L. So I'm just going to go, go ahead and paste it in there. And if you want to refactor that into its own method, you could do that as well. It's going to keep it, you know, as it is for now. And then it's going to get the component and the component is going to get the mesh render of the, of the existing mesh that got generated. And I'm also going to be changing the material of each one of those. It's going to say invisible material. Perfect. And then on this one, we just say we want the visible material, right? Because this is the one that we want. It's going to say, okay, if it's, if it's visible, it's going to do that. But if it's not visible, we're going to change it back to basically back to visible. And then I'll just do the opposite here. And then we'll just do that here. And this is going to be a visible material. And then of course, we're going to have to change the property to false here. Otherwise we're never going to be able to toggle it. So it's going to say, you know, is visible visibility here is going to be set to false. And then we'll just do the opposite here. It's going to be set to true. Perfect. But I also want to change the, the label of the button. So if we go back into unity, I want to change the label of these. And I also have a reference to that. So if we go back in here, and we go back up. It's called the visibility status. So we're just going to change that visibility status. I was going to say, you know, change the text of that. And then for that, we're just going to say mesh visibility. At this point, it's going to be the opposite. So, because at this point, it's going to be set to false. We're going to set it to on. And then in this case, it's going to be off. And that will cover everything that we need to do in this, in, in the toggle mesh. So just as a recap, in this one, we're going to get a list of meshes. We're going to get the actual mesh render on the mesh prefab because we need to change it. You know, if we're visible, we're going to make it invisible. If we're not visible, we're going to make it visible. And we're also going to be changing the state and also every single one of the meshes. On the update statement, we're just basically creating a new, a new object every time we touch on the screen on the touch begin or when we move our fingers. So if we go back into Unity and let's just make sure that everything is going to compile. And I'm just going to go ahead and build it. But that's basically everything that you need to do to get this working. And if I build it, go here, and then I already built it before. It's just going to do an append. That basically wraps up this video. So if you guys have any questions about anything that I just mentioned, 
please let me know in the comments and also if you want to get the source code today make sure that you go over to patreon and i'm gonna be making it available there for anybody that signs up today thank you guys